Perplexity just announced a new AI feature called Deep Research and in case you didn't know, it is supposed to be a new way of AI to answer a question. It has similar ability to the reasoning models like OpenAI O1 and DeepSeek R1 but it is way better. I have done some testing and here's what you need to know about Perplexity Deep Research. First, it is completely free and that's insane. In my previous video, I mentioned that Perplexity is such a good value for content creators and marketers because even if you're not subscribing to the pro subscription, you still get 5 generous credits every single day. And those free credits can be used on deep research mode as well. Just to give some idea, Perplexity Deep Research is a response to OpenAI Deep Research which is only available, at least right now, on the $200 per month pro subscription. But on Perplexity, this insane feature is completely free. If you go to Perplexity, you should be able to see the deep research option on the drop-down menu. However, before you try to ask anything, there is something that you need to keep in mind. Perplexity deep research is slow, like it's very very slow. I've done some testing to create a blog post and it took about 3 minutes to finish the job. In comparison, reasoning models like R1 and O1 will usually get the job done in less than a minute and for the regular pro search mode, it's about 20 seconds. Don't get me wrong, for what it's capable of, 3 minutes is actually pretty fast. If you look at the process of deep research trying to generate the answer, you will see that on each step, it will read dozens of pages for that particular step. If there are 10 steps with 5 pages, then it would read 50 pages just to answer whatever question you are asking. And Perplexity is fully aware of this behavior that they have added a notification feature in case you want to leave it running while you are making a coffee or something. But it is very impressive considering that OpenAI Deep Research, which is the competitor that Perplexity is up against, took between 5 to 20 minutes to do its own research. And remember, we are talking about a product that costs $200 a month versus the one that you can use daily for free. And did I mention that OpenAI has a maximum cap of 100 tasks per month? Yeah, if you're a free Propacity user, you will receive 5 credits a day. That would mean that they can use up to 150 deep research tasks every month. It's not every day that we can see something that is free but somehow managed to be better than anything that costs you a lot of money. And that's why I think Perplexity Deep Research is almost too good to be true. But I think the reason why Perplexity can do this is because they are not relying on a third-party AI model. If you remember my video about Perplexity as the best AI browser tool, I really like Sonar which is an AI model based on Meta's Llama but has been fine-tuned by Perplexity for better efficiency. Basically, I mentioned that Sonar is surprisingly good at complex queries and the content it was generated feels very human. Now, Perplexity did not say anything about the AI model that they are using to run the deep research mode but I think it is safe to say that this mode is being powered by the Sonar model. Even in their API documentation, they have recently added Sonar Reasoning Pro which is presumably powering deep research. Also, someone on Reddit have recreated OpenAI Deep Research but with Perplexity Sonar Pro model. Regardless, it is incredible how open source AI model can bring down a closed AI model from the lives of OpenAI. Closed AI model from OpenAI. That sounds much like an oxymoron. But anyway, the question is, when it comes to the output quality, is it any better than regular AI chat or reasoning models? Well, let's find out. For the test, I asked Perplexity Deep Research to generate an SEO-friendly article based on this short prompt. I really like this topic because a lot of AIs are struggling to answer the question of how to not turn a PC into a space heater. Basically, the question wasn't asking about improving airflow, but rather how to make PC components produce less heat and therefore not heating up the room. In many of my tests, all AIs fail at this task. They keep recommending me to upgrade the fan or install a liquid cooler. Sure, they will help the PC run cooler, but that's not the kind of cool that I really mean. In a nutshell, I just want to see some suggestions to make my PC 
run more efficiently so it doesn't generate too much heat and turning my room into a hot sauna. Anyway, after 4 minutes of thinking, deep research just answered my question. It generated a well-structured content, it has some bullet points and tables, and I like that it is following nearly all of my requirements except for the keyword, but that's okay. When it comes to the answer, almost everything is right. First, it suggests to underfold the CPU and GPU, which is true, it is one of the best strategies to make your PC produce less heat. Then, it suggests limiting the frame rate when playing video games. It is also totally makes sense, the less frame, the less power it consumes. And finally, it recommends me to choose a power efficient hardware like instead of using a hard drive, use an SSD. This is also true and totally makes sense. All those things will make your computer produce less heat. But unfortunately, Perplexity Deep Research still recommends airflow configuration. It tells me to move the fan position or upgrade the cooling system which doesn't reduce the heat generated by the components. It just moves the heat out of system faster. If it understands the difference between making PC cooler versus making PC produce less heat, it won't recommend anything even remotely related to cooling systems. So unfortunately, it still failed the test. Maybe AGI in the near future will be able to understand the nuance and perhaps can pass this cool PC question. But despite all of that, I still prefer deep research than reasoning AIs and regular AI chats. The content is much longer and more thorough. It is detailed at tackling problems, it provides a lot of context, and overall more readable. All those things together make the content from Perplexity Deep Research not only helpful to humans, but also SEO friendly. And if you're a marketer, you know that it is very important. So in the end, I still recommend using Perplexity Deep Research for content creation. The 5 free credits a day is a lot, and if you need more, you can always subscribe to the pro subscription. I will link a $10 discount code in the video description if you are interested. And of course, I will be using deep research more for my project and I'll be sharing some of my findings in this channel. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. And if you're curious about tips and tricks on perplexity, then check out this video and I'll see you there. Thanks for watching.